am not acting at the moment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, what is the first uh, job you did after completing your first degree? Chief Justice, after completing my first degree, I was appointed a legal assistant slash public prosecutor in 1988. Yes. I prosecuted for three years. Thereafter, I was appointed acting magistrate. I presided over criminal matters as well as maintenance matters and traffic court matters. Yes. Thereafter, in 1993, I was appointed a magistrate. I then presided over criminal as well as civil matters. And where was that? From 1993 up to 1997, I sat in Mukhwase in the district oh, of yes. Rustenbeck. Oh, yes, Mukhwase, yes. From 1997 to 2003, March, I was then transferred to Mafiking Mabatu. Yes. That is where I presided over criminal matters as well as civil cases. Yes. Civil cases included civil trials, opposed and unopposed motions, as well as default judgments. In Mabatu, I was part of the magistrate's working group who formulated guidelines on Domestic Violence Act for the use of the magistrates. In 2003, I was then appointed a regional magistrate in Sibuking. Yes. And uh, all in, well, you were a district court magistrate for how many years? I was a district court magistrate for close to 14 years. And regional court? I am a regional court magistrate for close to 13 years. So all in all, you've been all a magistrate all, I'm, I'm, for about 27 years? All in all, I have got 26 years experience on the bench. Yes. That excludes um, acting appointments, Chief Justice. Yes. And you acted in Johannesburg, is, am I right? Uh, that is correct, Chief Justice. Um, all in all, for how many terms? I acted all in all for 15 months, which comes down to 60 weeks. Yes. And how did you find uh, your, exp your acting experience there? Was it intimidating? Was it difficult? Was it very difficult? And if... If, if it was difficult, why so? Chief Justice, for the fact that coming from the magistracy to the high court is a big transition. At the beginning, it was intimidating. That was in 2011, when I started acting in the high court in Gauteng. As the years went by 2012, 2013, up to 2016. Things became easy. I was able to cope, of course, with the assistance of senior judges and colleagues. The, my acting appointment became pleasurable. Up to 2016, Chief Justice, I was able to write because I sat in the criminal as well as the civil court. I was able to write judgments on the civil side. I could have written about 27 civil judgments, excluding extempore judgments. Yes. And um, 
So there are no challenges. You, you at settle the moment, down, you're enjoying it. At the moment, Chief Justice, there are no challenges. I yes. am enjoying it. Yes. Thank you. JP? Good evening. Good evening, Ms. JP. Um, did you only do, sorry. You said you um, presided in civil trials. Not so. In, in the High Court or in yes, the regional court? Yes, in the High Court. Yes, JP. Did you preside in motion court? I presided in motion court, JP. I, I provided my spreadsheet. I don't know if it was circulated amongst the commissioners. How many times in the motion court? Uh, through, through you, Chief Justice, can I, may I please, um, Direct the JP to my spreadsheet. <coughs> I made copies for members of the commission if they don't have. From 2011 up to 2016, I said 10 weeks in the unopposed motions. I said six weeks in the opposed motions. I said eight weeks in the civil trials. I said one week in the agent court. I said 15 weeks in the civil appeals as well as the criminal appeals. The total thereof is 60 weeks. Well, it's 60 weeks including my acting appointment in the criminal which is in the criminal court, which is 20 weeks. I beg your pardon, JP. I don't know if it will be enough. I don't need the stats. Thank you. Uh, pr please proceed, JP. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> now, have you ever applied or at the Houting High Court? Yes, I once applied a JP. And what happened? By the time that I applied, I had more exposure in the criminal court. I was not shortlisted. However, thereafter, the JP of Gauteng gave me opportunities to act once more, and since then, I was then placed in the civil court. Yes, thank you. Thank you, JP. MEC Muchwari. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Chief Justice. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Honorable uh, Commissioner. Has any of your judgments during your 26 years of practice as a magistrate been taken on appeal? If so, were you able to identify areas of development and have you attended to them? Thank you. Honorable Commissioner, as a regional court magistrate, 37 of my judgments were taken on appeal. 33 of them were confirmed. Amongst the four, two convictions were set aside. The other two, the sentences were altered. I learned from the judgments that were set aside on convictions. I also learned on the two sentences that were set aside. From that time, I, I was able to realize where I overstepped or where I understepped. That is 
as a regional court magistrate. In the High Court, since 2011, no results actually came out of the judgments that were supposedly taken on appeal because one, in one judgment I granted leave to appeal, the appeal was struck off the roll. I granted two leave to appeal in, in recently in February, in January and February. So those matters have not yet gone on appeal. That is since I acted in the High Court from 2011 to 2016 intermittently. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, MSC uh, Commissioner Didiza. Thank you very much, uh, CJ. Good evening, Jeff. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Honorable Commissioner. How are you? Um, fine, thanks. You fine. And yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you've told us how many stints you acted. How would you say that um, acting position prepared you for the position you're applying for? Honorable Commissioner, like I have indicated, I am coming from the magistracy. I am a regional court magistrate. From uh, the regional court to the high court is a big transition. I, I have realized that writing judgments in the regional court is not the same as writing judgments in the high court. In the high court, your judgments are exposed to the public. And therefore, there is a high level of criticism. So when you sit and write judgment in the high court, you are really making sure that you are writing a judgment that is going to go out to the public and be scrutinized by the public. In that way, I learned that sitting in the high court bench, I must do my best. I must work very hard. That is how my acting appointments prepared me for the position I'm applying for today. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there's a letter in the pack, I'm not sure whether you've seen, on comments uh, from law bodies. I have seen that, Commissioner. Where there is a concern that has been raised by a person who worked with you who alleges that you accused him of uh, stealing. And as such, at the end of that letter, he concludes that he does not think uh, you, would, you would be regarded as somebody who is fit to hold the office. What would you say to that? Honorable Commissioner, I would like to thank this commission for having given me an opportunity to respond to that letter. I have responded to the letter. I have indicated that I never called Mr. Rashitanga a thief. I want to mention to this commission that I have mentored colleagues who are today occupying high levels in the judiciary. I have also taken by the hand many prosecutors, many clerks, many interpreters who are today occupying high positions of senior prosecutors, senior interpreters even in the high court, and some, some of them are advocates of the bar. I am known to be a respecting and respected person. The comment by Mr. Rachitanga surprised me. I am left surprised. I, 
I do not know where that came from because when the matter happened, I immediately reported to the JP of Gauteng and left the matter in his hands. However, the comment as it stands before the commission today, it is my belief that it doesn't go towards my judicial work. And therefore, I wish to impress upon this commission to view that letter as something that should not impact on my appointment to the position I'm applying for. Thank you very much, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner Didiza. Commissioner Norman. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, good evening, uh, Judge Mahalela. Good evening, yes. Honorable Commissioner. Yes. Thank you. I just want to understand, uh, can you just briefly tell the Commission the circumstances under which this objection by Mr. Uh, Rashatanga, uh, as to how the, what, what happened, what led to those um, allegations? Thank you, um, Honorable Member. What happened was I was acting and occupying a chamber which could only be accessed by um, fingerprint. In my view, Mr. Rachitanga and myself were the only people who could access the chamber with a fingerprint. On the particular day, we went to court in the morning, leaving the sunglasses in the chamber. As it is the norm, when we adjourn at court at tea time, lunch time, and perhaps after court, the person that you are working with would then take the files, anything that is supposed to go back to chamber. Now, because Mr. Rachitanga had access to chamber, I did not have a problem of him taking, the, I did not have to be there to open for him. He, he would open for himself. So I did not have a, any problem of him taking anything that needed to be in the chamber and taking it there in my absence. On that day I went to court in the morning, I came back from court at past four. I never came to chamber during the day. He was the person who came to chamber during the day. However, when we now needed to take files to the car, when I knocked off, when I wanted to take everything that belonged to me, the sunglasses were not there. As it is natural that when you are occupying a certain space with somebody else, when you do not find something that you are looking for, you would just simply ask the person if he or she had not seen whatever was there that was missing. That is what happened on that day. I asked him, he said he did not see them. We then parted, but now the next day, Mr. Ratitanga did not report for duty. I had to be allocated another clerk. I went to court and performed my duties. He only came to chamber in the afternoon of that day, around about five o'clock, and uh, inquired if I had seen the glasses. As I told him I, I'd put the matter behind me. Uh, we must continue working. He then indicated to me that he was not comfortable working with me anymore, insinuating that I was accusing him of having stolen the glasses. I prevailed upon Mr. Rachitanga on that day that I was not accusing him of anything. The, we parted then. The following day, during lunchtime, Mr. Rashitanga then came with the police to chamber. Because I had not 
laid any charges. I had not opened any case against anybody. I then requested the police to leave. That was when I reported the matter to the JP of Gauteng and left the matter in his hands to take it further if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see you've written a judgment um, on this, the, that involved the Steve Bigo Foundation that dealt with construction law. How did you find that area of the law having to interpret and deal with the JPCC agreements? How did you find that to be? Well, um, it, it, it was something that was new to me, but like any other magistrate or any other judge or anybody who is hardworking and serious about the work that she or he is doing. I had to sit down, read up a bit, do a bit of research, and come up with this judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner. Um, stand up. Yes, uh, Commissioner Madise. Thank you, CJ. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Honorable Commissioner. The, I like the enthusiasm and the energy, <laughs> perhaps because we are already <laughs> tired. But I, um, I think that um, the accusation which you say you did not make on the young man um, is not as simple as that to dismiss because what he is actually question, asking us to question is whether anybody must be given the privilege of deciding on the destinies of people if they can accuse others without any evidence. Have you not found these glasses since? I have not. Have you them? not considered in the light, I was actually hoping that you would say that the incident actually never happened, <laughs> that you never sent him to your car to fetch any stuff or anybody, and therefore that it was a figment of his uh, imagination. I would have been very happy if your response was like that. But the fact that you agree that um, he helped you carry things and uh, you did actually ask him about the sunglasses does say that it, um, it might be that, in fact, the whole incident happened and that he, in fact, as he says, he did not take your sunglasses. Have you never considered um, just going through your mind whether or not you did not do any injustice? to a young man. Honorable Commissioner, I spoke about having to pack things in the office to prepare to take them to the car. We never reached my car on that day with Mr. Rashitanga. I have even up to today, not found my glasses. However, I am still reiterating that I never accused Mr. Rachitanga. I, 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 I thought it was reasonable for me to ask him, as the person that I was working with, I, I was quite sure that I am not sure that he is the one, or he could be the one, who took my glasses. Hence, I am saying, I never accused him. And if um, Honorable Commissioner can look at the letter once more, he is mentioning that in January of this year, I met him in Palm Ridge, and I greeted him warmly and wished him compliments for the new year. I believe that that is not the conduct of a person who, when you meet after having called a thief, you can really do that to him. 
did you actually meet? We and met. Did you? We met. That complicates things, but um, <laughs> thank you, CJ. <laughs> thank you. Minister. I want to follow up on the met. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Honorable Commissioner. Okay. Page five of the complaint of the objection. It says, whether she, the last paragraph, whether she later found them or not, she never apologized to me. But when she saw me at the beginning of 2017, she greeted me warmly and wished me compliments for the new year. I did not know what caused the change of attitude towards me after the incident. Whatever it is, she does not seem to be aware. Okay. At all, for the harm she did to my name. Then I want to go to the other paragraph. I'm finishing, uh, Chief Justice. The second paragraph on the damage that was done to my reputation. Only those who know me or have an idea of who I am dismiss the rumor as false. Most of the registrar and some judges were supportive of me and helped me deal with my pain. <laughs> then she is saying, in her contact, the acting judge showed disregard for a number of legal principles. This is a candidate at him. The principle of at atem patem, Respect for human dignity as enshrined in the Constitution 108 of 1996. The principle that one is innocent until proven guilty. The principle that when making decisions, judges must be objectively consider the facts as a whole before making a decision and not refuse to hear facts that may prove or demonstrate the accused innocent. The last one that I like most. Logic and divine law are supposed to inform us in our existence as jurists and as persons. If I leave my phone on my work table for hours, I cannot come back to find it missing and, and conclude that my office mate stole it. I cannot further proceed to spread rumor that she stole it without proof of sale. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a serious note. <laughs> yes. The, the, this boy now, young man. Yeah, the young man, the aspirant lawyer, Atin. Put yourself in his shoes. As a human being, being humiliated at the workplace, more so, he was willing to be arrested. Somebody called the police. And it's alleged you are the one that says them. We also confirmed now, Uri, because I didn't open a case. That's why I didn't see the reason why the police were called. But I should believe whoever called the police, it was his or her will to make sure that justice at the end of the day must prevail. I think uh, we have heard you responding to Advocate Nomen. Commissioner, the chairperson, Mudise, I think you still need to say more about this, especially to respond to these issues that this, this, this young man has put in there to say you are not a fit and a proper person. And he has been very eloquent to list why he, he, he thinks you are not a fit and a proper person. I love a situation when you respond on them systematically, one, two, three, up to five, then I'll be very happy. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Minister. Oh, before she answers, okay, please go ahead. Um, 
The, 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 it's in page four of that complaint. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, P page, Honorable Commissioner. Page four of that complaint. Okay. The, the compla the, 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 it reads as follows. We <coughs> walked back to her car. At her car, she demanded to search my bags. I gave them to her, and she searched them. She requested to search my car. I pointed to the direction of my car, but she did not go. Another judge walked past on his way, on his way to his car. That is when she started telling the judges that I was a thief who had stolen glasses from her chambers. I mean, this is so precise in terms of identifying a, a particular conduct on your part that suggests that you, in fact, accused him of, of stealing something. Can you respond to that? Honorable Commissioner, I am just imagining a situation where another judge is passing by and I am calling somebody else a thief. That cannot be me. I have already indicated to the question that was posed that we never even went to the car, went to my car. As to the question that was posed by the honorable member, I, I cannot see how the principle of Audi Alter Rampartem can play a role in a conversation between the two people. This was a conversation. Me asking Mr. Rat Chitanga about whether he had seen the glasses. I do not see that this complaint really goes towards, like I have indicated, my judicial function or my integrity. I am surprised by perhaps the timing of this letter. I am just saying to the commission, had it been that all what is contained in this letter happened as Mr. Rachitanga puts it, no complaint was made to the judge president of Gauteng. The judge president of Gauteng learned from me about the incident. As to the question of the police who were called, the, perhaps the convention or the procedure is police can't just come to a judge's chamber without the knowledge of the judge president. That is why I had to request the police to leave because I had not called them. I had not laid any charges against whether Mr. Rashidanga or anybody else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you have something? Yes, Minister. Uh, Commissioner Masuku, if you could. Oh, Thank you. Just a follow-up, uh, after this. Page four. <laughs> I'm trying to understand the conversation between two people. It's the second paragraph, wherein he's saying, it's in the middle there, somewhere there. Yeah. She used the following words, Patu, you and I are the only ones with access to the chambers. If I do not know where the glasses are, then you should know. Close quote. Maybe that's a conversation between the two people. I want to understand the extent of the conversation. And then the, the rule 
Maybe some of us will need to be schooled and I want to be finished with that rule, a Chief Justice through you. To say, when it comes to access to justice, the police, the circumstances in which the police will come to any vicinity, those, I think the majority of you are criminal lawyers. Then somebody laid a complaint, so they came. I don't know how the circumstances when the police have to come to the chamber. Because the reason that is being raised is that uh, police are not supposed to come to the chamber unless yourself as a presiding officer has called them. But here, the context under which this matter is presented, there was a thief. There was theft. And whoever called the police then maybe wanted the police to come and investigate the theft that has taken place. But then, nevertheless, I really don't know, but I think we need to be advised then under what circumstances, because the police wouldn't have just come. There was a reason why they had to come, and there was a theft that was alleged to have taken place. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner. I, I understand your question to say there was a theft, thief, there was theft, and the police had to come. If, if, if there was a complaint laid so that the police could come, I was supposed to have been the complainant. But I'm saying, as far as I'm concerned, the matter did not even require any charges to be laid with the police. Like I indicated, I had already put the matter behind me when Mr. Rashitanga told me that he did not feel comfortable to work with me, and I told him that I respected his decision, and I prevailed upon him that I did not accuse him of having stolen my glasses. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mahalelo. You're excused again. I have, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, and your name is actually here. I apologize to you, uh, Commissioner Fori. Please go ahead. I'll be brief. Thank you, Chief Justice. Good evening. Good evening, Honorable Member. I just want to make sure that I understand correctly. You acted extensively in the Gauteng Local Division. That is correct. But you've never acted in the Northwest Division. That is correct. Have you ever been to the Northwest High Court? High Court? Yeah. Yes, I have been. When was that? Um, Honorable Commissioner, I worked in the, uh, the court in Mabatu. The court is not far from, the magistrate court is not far from the High Court. Okay. That You're was in the year that that was in the year 2000 i believe okay do you regard that as a disadvantage that you had, have never acted in the court that you are applying for to become a judge i do not regard that as an advantage a disadvantage honorable commissioner i see you reside in Thunderbell park yes commissioner should you get appointed, do you intend relocating? Northwest is my home. I originate from Northwest. I live in a village called Dinukana. I would not have any problem of relocating. But you give your residential addresses, 33 Murdoch Street, from the Bell Park. That is correct. How that long is have where you been residing there? Uh, since... 2003, April. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you very much, Commissioner Fari. Thank you, Ms. Mahalelo. Again, I apologize to you for the extremely late start that must have inconvenienced you a great deal. Thank you for nevertheless uh, making yourself uh, available to be interviewed. You are now excused. 
Thank you, Chief Justice and the Commissioners. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.